the last few weeks because we find that in these times people are thinking about their spiritual condition or thinking about their relationship to God and thinking about where they will spend eternity. So more people are asking, what, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? What must I do to have Jesus as my Savior? We could talk at length about how many different kinds of wrong answers there are in the religious world to that question. And we have emphasized each and every time the importance of you and me always going to the scriptures and understanding the answer that God has given. So what I've done on this chart this morning, very quickly, let's ask the one who is our Savior. Who better to ask than Jesus himself? And so we're asking, what would Jesus answer? to the question, if you ask him, what must I do to be saved, Lord? What must I do for you to save me? Well, he doesn't have, as we, as Bible students know, a single passage in which he gives the items in sequence or in a step procedure or process. But there are statements that he made during his earthly ministry that indicate the answer to this question. So let's answer the question uh, based upon his own words. In John chapter 8 and verse 24, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sin. So there's no question that believing in him as the Christ, the Son of God, is necessary not to die in our sins, not to be lost. So that's one answer he gives. But let's look at another. In Luke chapter 13 and in verse 3, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So we must accept this answer along with every other. That Jesus answered the question, if we don't want to perish, if we don't want to be lost, then very clearly in this passage, he says, we must repent. So it indicates to us, uh, first of all, that the belief in John chapter 8 and verse 24 by itself is not enough, because while we believe in him, he also teaches that we must repent of our sins. So we have two answers, but it continues so that we have all that Jesus said in answer to this question in Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 32. Everyone, therefore, who shall confess me before men... Him will I confess before my Father who is in heaven. We know that Jesus requires us to confess him. In fact, he makes a statement here that indicates the importance of that. If we want him to confess us before the Father in heaven, then he says to you and me, we must confess him before others here in this life. The Apostle Paul referred to Timothy, the good confession that Timothy had made. In Acts chapter 8, we have the statement of the confession of the Ethiopian, which is simply a statement, an acknowledgement, a verbal confession of one's faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. So that's another part of the answer. In Mark chapter 16, and Mark's account of the Great Commission, we couldn't have a more direct answer than the Lord says to his apostles just before he ascended back to heaven go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he made this statement in verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that disbelieveth shall be condemned. We understand why the individual who does not believe will be condemned because he will proceed no further. But notice the first part of this verse, a very specific answer. Who is it, Lord, that will be saved? All we have to do is to read the clear, express statement of the Lord. Jesus said, he that believeth and with equal value is baptized shall be saved. So let's be careful when we try to answer the question in, in something that is so important as the salvation of our soul. And make sure we have a Bible answer. This morning, we have given that Bible answer from Jesus' own words. If we would ask him what must I do to be saved? He clearly answers this question. Let me add one more thought to that. And the answer that he gives in his own words is no different than what we're going to read in the book of Acts, what we read in the epistles. In other words, there is complete harmony 
in what the Lord said during his earthly ministry and what the apostles preached and required as they went into all the world. And it's still true today.